Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thank you all for joining me at this time. My name is Shavi Zane, and I'm coming on to bring a message for the chosen. So this message is for those of you who are committed to your spiritual journey, but you find yourself growing apart spiritually from your romantic partner. Now, this is a common theme. It is a normal part of the process for the chosen seed. So I want to talk to you all about that because a lot of times you might find that you've been with someone for a long period of time. It could be multiple years and you met them at a time in your life where you were still very much so in your sleep state. And so there were certain things that you had in common, you know, you might have enjoyed together, whether it was going out to the club or having a glass of Henny every weekend or um, smoking together or watching Jerry Springer and Maury together or loving hip hop, whatever you have going on, you might have found that you bonded with that person in those ways when you first got together. And so these are the things that the two of you might have done in order to entertain one another, you know, but one of you woke up, let's say you woke up, right? And you started to look around and you started to feel different. You started to think differently. And so you begin to take the spiritual journey. The most high led you down your, a, a different path. You know, you started to do your spiritual work. You put altars in your home. You are listening to frequencies. You're going outside grounding. You're sun gazing. You're moon gazing. You're into astrology. You're, you know, looking into various things. Okay. And... Also, you might even say, okay, you and your partner might have gone to church every once in a while, even if neither of you were necessarily very religious, or maybe the other person was very religious, even though y'all still drank your henny and went to the club and watched uh, Jerry Springer, right? That person might have been very much so into church, and they felt that their redemption counted on being at church every Sunday, in spite of their behavior Monday through Saturday, Okay. That is the case in a lot of times, right? So here you are growing spiritually. You're starting to see things differently. You're thinking differently. You're acting differently. You're responding to things differently. Even when it comes down to the disagreements that you have with your partner, you respond completely differently. You don't engage anymore. You don't chase them anymore. You don't raise your voice at them anymore. You allow yourself to look at it from a different perspective because you understand that you're just exchanging energy. So you become so aware spiritually that you don't even want to exchange that type of energy with your partner. So you might start to handle disagreements in a way where it's actually healthy, right? And so your partner is not used to this. They might think that your peace, your emotional balance and the way that you're handling things means that you don't care anymore. Or it means that you're seeing someone else or whatever the case may be, they're no longer able to trauma bond with you through arguments anymore. And so things begin to shift drastically when you are committed to your spiritual journey. I'm not talking about those people who awaken and then they backslide for the sake of maintaining compatibility with their partner. I'm talking about those of you who are committed to your transformation and you understand that you're going to go through many of them for the rest of your life and you're going to constantly evolve into this higher being and this greater person for the rest of your life. And if you decide to be in a relationship with someone who you met when you were in your sleeping state um, and they have refused to even take a look down the spiritual path you're on. They've refused to gain any understanding of what you know. They're rejecting your wisdom. That comes with it because a lot of times it's not that because, okay, naturally you as a spiritually evolving being, you want everybody to rise higher, right? That becomes a part of your mission because you begin to realize that you have a divine assignment and that's to help other people to wake up. You don't want to be around people who are literally walking zombies. So likely the first person that you're going to want to share this news with is the person that you have been laying down with and sharing your body with 
every day for the past how many years, you know? But when they start to hear you speak like that, it's not the fact that what you're saying doesn't make any sense. It's really the fact that it's coming from you that a lot of times they'll reject it because they don't want you to be in a position where somehow now you know more. And this is for those of you who are in relationships with partners who are ego driven. You know, those people who recognize that you changing means that so does the dynamics of the relationship. So does certain things that you used to do. And if they're having a hard time releasing their carnal ways and a lot of the low vibrational things that they uh, that the two of you might have indulged in before, then that's intimidating for them to know that, OK, if I listen to these things and if I start to take this path with this person, I got to give up this. I got to give up that. And for someone who is still asleep or someone who's refusing to wake up, that is a scary thing for them. Because then not only would they have to change their ways, but now they got to start evaluating the friendships that they have. Because likely their friends were on the same uh, accord when it comes to doing the low vibrational things. And so now everything just begins to change. And so these types of relationships are very, very difficult to manage. And you'll get to a place where you wake up and you don't even recognize each other anymore. You'll look at that person as an awakened being. You'll look at them and you have a lower tolerance for their energy, even if they're not doing anything at all. It could just be a regular day, but you can pick up on their insecurities. You can pick up on their lack mentality. You know, they might have a certain way of viewing money and finances, whereas you, you're sitting over there manifesting. You got a whole vision, a whole plan that you're creating. You have developed a different relationship with currency, not money, but currency, where you're focused on attracting generational wealth because you understand that it begins with the mind. While this person that you're dealing with they're still in lack mentality. So they're complaining about where's the money going to come from for the next bill and, you know, how are you going to manage X, Y, Z? And you used to do that with them. And so they're not going to be so comfortable with you saying you got to think differently. You got to start. It's all in your mind, you know, and they're not going to be comfortable when they start to see doors open for you. That's not opening for them because that's going to be the part. That's going to be a large part of your reward. You're healing, you're growing, you're transforming um, and you're committed to your spiritual journey. And so doors are going to begin to open and they're going to eyewitness you leveling up in different areas of your life. And that is going to be very intimidating for them because that insecurity is going to begin to come through and automatically in their mind, they're going to think this person is evolving too high. They're going to feel like you are naturally going to attract someone else or you're going to seek out someone else who is, as they would call it, equally yoked or spiritually in alignment with you. And so this comes with the territory. You have to prepare for this if you are on your spiritual journey, but you're in a relationship with someone that you've known since before you was awakened, but they're not taking the journey. They're not interested. You send them videos, you, you give them books to read, you uh, tell them to come out and get grounded with you. And you know, this person, they can't stay in bugs. They don't like being out in nature. They think the sun is too hot. They think that, you know, standing in the, on the earth barefoot is dirty. You know, if you cannot find a common ground with that person and everything that you do, they reject because they're still in their sleep state or they're refusing to awaken, then you're going to get to a place where you have to make a decision. And that's a large part of your test on this journey. Remember, you are a spirit having a human experience. So you don't want to take it personally. You don't want to look at it as being a punishment if you have to walk away from this person. You look at it as being a test that's going to open up a new door. Because I'm telling you, when you get to that place where nothing is meshing, everything is repelling when it comes to your relationship, and you have one tower moment after another tower moment, and this person is beginning to show themselves like, it's going to be to the point where your spiritual gifts are, become, are going to become much more heightened over time. It's like they're going to get more and more elevated. And so you as an empath, naturally, you are going to be empathic when you take the spiritual journey because you have to be spiritually aware to take the spiritual journey. 
And so your spiritual gifts have to become activated so that you know what energies are in alignment with you and what energies are not. So you'll, you'll start to hear things that this person ain't even saying. You'll start to see things that this person ain't even necessarily doing because you're seeing the spiritual nature of who they are. And so the more that you begin to see, the less attracted you are to that person, not just aesthetically attracted, but I'm talking about spiritually attracted to that person. And so even sexually, you'll be, you'll be less motivated because you'll understand that the energy that that person was thriving on sexually was low vibrational. Y'all might have had the best sex in the world when you had arguments. You might have had the best sex in the world when you were drunk or high. But now that you are in your sober mind and this person feels like they still got to get drunk or high in order to, you know, turn it out in the bedroom, you're going to be less attracted to the energy that they are harboring when you are sexually interacting. And so you're going to get to that place where you realize that you have to let that person go because they're not willing to grow. And so it's either one of three things that will happen. Either you're going to walk away from that person because you know that there's no more room for growth or you're going to completely stop taking your spiritual journey and you're going to sit there and just wait right there where you stand on your spiritual path in hopes that somehow they'll awaken. So you're going to stay with this person and constantly try to force feed spirituality down their throat in hopes that they'll get it at some point. So you're stunning your own growth or you're going to completely turn around on your spiritual journey and go backwards, back into your carnal nature in order to maintain a compatible relationship with that person. And I just know that most of you are going to say no because your spiritual journey is much more important to you than holding on to a unhealthy relationship. And so many of you will not compromise your growth because if you do, if you do, if you don't walk away from this person, but you decide to either stop taking your journey and, and force feed it or turn back around and go down a negative path with this person, your karma is going to become that much greater. Your spiritual team is not going to just allow you. They're going to give you the free will to do it, but it's not going to come without a whole lot of massive issues in your life because that's just not what it's supposed to be. You have too much to add to the world. You have too many things to do. Your spiritual evolution is necessary in the age of Aquarius. Humanity depends on you continuing to rise higher and become the best version of yourself. So it, it does get to that place where you have to make very hard decisions. So you want to look at it from a positive perspective. If you find yourself in a position where you're having to walk away from a partnership that is no longer in alignment with you spiritually. Don't look at it as, okay, well, you know, the worst case scenario. Look at the positive effects of it. That person will now have the opportunity to free themselves of codependencies and to see the importance of maintaining healthy relationships. You become the example for that person, even though it hurts them. Sometimes they'll become your outright enemy, okay? But that's going to be on them. Not because you're making them your enemy, it's because they choose to see you as the enemy because you've chosen a path that doesn't include them. And so it'll give them the opportunity to heal though. And it's going to open up massive doors for you because sometimes that's the piece to the puzzle that people don't realize. It, that's the key to that golden door that you've been waiting for. That's the key to you receiving that grand mass. Um, manifestation or creative vision that you have been, you know, putting out into the universe and praying for. Sometimes that's the final piece is walking away from someone that you have been in a long-term relationship with. And when you close that door, I'm telling you, doors begin to open that you could never imagine. If you had financial uh, issues where things were slow, it, finances begin to flow like, like living water you'll see things shift in your life drastically because you decided to stay committed to your path and you wouldn't allow your old nature or your carnal nature to, uh, to uh, dictate what this path is going to look like for you. You're not going to allow someone else's emotions 
or fear of walking away from them or fear of seeing them with someone else dictate your spiritual path because you decide to remain committed. So there's great reward that comes with great sacrifice. So I hope that this message brings you the clarity that you need if you find yourself at this point in your journey. Um, and I hope that it encourages you to make the right decision, not just for yourself, but also for the person that you are with, because they will not evolve if you continue to hold on to them, especially because you've already given them the tools. Likely you've already fed them enough wisdom so that when you decide to go your separate ways, they now have the opportunity to use those tools to become the better version of themselves. But if they decide to just leave your that all of that wisdom that you've shared with them behind and take a carnal path that's full of toxicity, then they will call a lot of karma to themselves. Um, and that's just a part of the journey. It's all a part of helping someone to see like, hey, this is the times, these are times where you can't afford to just live a life of uh, low vibrational energy, low vibrational thoughts, low vibrational actions. It's not in the cards today. This We in a whole different age. So in this age, it's the age of awakening. And if you're refusing to wake up and you refuse to take the path of, you know, toxicity, then you, it comes with a lot of lessons. But the chosen seed, you can't take that path anymore. You have the free will to take it, but it's strongly, strongly ill-advised, okay? So that's my message for you all. If you find that it resonates in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment below and let us know what does your spiritual path look like? Did you spiritually evolve, uh, evolve away from your partner? What did you have to do? What did that look like for you? Because many people need to hear it um, to know that others are also experiencing the same thing. So I will talk to you all next time.